It's been quite a long time that I've been home. Um, I'm very happy to see family, friends, and then old mates around. So I think it's very nice to always be home. Um, it's difficult to calculate considering what's been happening in Europe and then um, traveling, having traveling issues and then all that. But I think it's probably more than a year. I think everyone knows like because of the COVID, there's been um, a lot of bans on traveling and then all that. So that have um, make it very difficult for us to travel. So we were stuck in Europe to like, the COVID issue have eased down a little bit and then um, we are allowed to travel now. I think um, my career started back home in, in Tamale, where I played for Super Stanford. And then um, I was selected to join the Right to Dream Football Academy. And then um, I joined the academy, I spent three, four years, three, three to four years in the academy. Then I was awarded um, a scholarship to go and study in the UK. So this is how I actually started. So I went to UK as a student and then um, things changed around. So I'm no more a student, I'm uh, a professional footballer now. For me, um, I think, you know, in football, things change very fast. Um, I think my starting from Sweden was actually from Hadbury College. I was in the college, we finished our college season and then we traveled to um, Sweden for like a good year tournament, which is like one of the best youth tournament in, in the world, I would say. So we had a game playing like a fun games because um, the tournament is for the youth and then there's a lot of fun around it. So we are having like a fun game and then I was, I was scouted by the BK Herkin to come back after the tournament to come to, uh, for a trials. So when I went back to college, they actually told me to come back for a trials. First, I was so excited because when I was a kid, I always dreamed of becoming a professional footballer. And then um, after some time, when I got back to Sweden, I was so excited that I'm back, you know, trying to achieve my professional aim and then all that. But after a week or two, BK Hicken decided to sign me as a professional contract. I was so excited, but at the same time, I was also thinking about my professional, my studies as well. I, I, it got to a point I was a little bit hesitant about just giving up education and then continuing with football. So I said, um, I wasn't too sure if I wanted to sign the professional contract. And then I spoke to a lot of people. I spoke to Tom Venom, I spoke to the people in the college, and then they gave me a lot of um, advice about making decision. And then, um, and then they even assured me I can finish some, they even told me I can do some of my courses online and then all that. I think that was the thing that convinced me to actually just abandon education and then sign my first professional contract. Um, for me, I'm kind of a person who doesn't regret decisions because um, I feel like every decision that you've made is made to make you wiser, toughen you and then all that. So I've been to a lot of different places and then maybe I would have said without the football career, I wouldn't have had the opportunity to learn a lot of different culture and then to go to a lot of different countries as well. So being able to use the, this opportunity as a professional footballer to learn a lot of different culture, I think um, is something very positive for me. Yeah, I think, um, as you said, it's been a very difficult season this year. Um, Strasbourg is meant to, everyone understands Strasbourg, the club is very strong when, it's, when we are playing with the fans. And then I think this is probably the first time that we were playing without the fans. And then I think almost all the clubs um, struggle. Because if you look at um, all the clubs in League One, everything from the top to the bottom, people were fighting to win the league. Uh, clubs were fighting to win the league and then clubs were fighting to to avoid relegation. So I think the season was very complicated for almost everyone. So hopefully this season will be much better with all the fans coming back. Um, for me, um, I'm kind of a person who doesn't really choose one player. Um, I started as number nine, and then I, I used to look at players who play in the same position, the same size as me, and then their style of play, so that I can try to learn from them. So I had, I don't really have one, I have a lot of players I was learning from. I can say um, I was looking at players like um, Aguero, his movement. I was looking at players like um, Chicharito, his movement in front of the goals. I was, so I had like a lot of players that I was actually looking at, because I just, I'm kind of a person who just um, look at the games and then see who will add something into my game. 
So if I say I can just choose one player, that would be like very difficult for me. Um, for me, I think um, there are a lot of young boys coming and then there are a lot of old boys as well. Um, there are a lot of very good talents, a lot of new faces, a lot of big talents. Um, I just hope the coach will have the right balance because um, everything is about balance. Having like, too much young boys can be bad, having too much old boys can be bad as well. So you just need to understand and have the right balance and then um, hopefully the team can work together to achieve something better for the country. I think um, I've got a lot of um, issues surrounding with the Black Stars. Um, I think um, there are certain things which are not really clear and then I hope maybe one day they will, be, um, they will have better reasons for other players because um, the important thing is that the country will win because it doesn't matter who is playing, it doesn't matter if I'm playing, it doesn't matter if I'm not playing, what matters is the country wins. But I feel like um, for us to win, we have the quality, we have the ability, we have the potential, but we just need to make the right decisions and then I think this is the only way we can win. So I think, um, th I hope things will be done properly and then we can all enjoy. I can say I'm not happy, I'm not playing, but if the country win, if we win the AFCON, if we win the World Cup, of course I'm going to celebrate. Of course, I'm going to be out with my friends celebrating because we are, I'm a player, it's, we all have like emotional feelings, but if we are winning, we win together. So I think, um, I just hope things will be done properly and then um, we can all win together. I think um, even starting from, I think I, I had a very good um, start with Asamojan up front, which was very good. Um, I played with a lot, we had a lot of good understanding. And then um, I played with Jordan as well. So I've played with a lot of all these players and then uh, this is why I was talking about the balance. And then Asamojan was like a kind of a player who he will score for the country. And then he's completely different player, Asamojan. You know, there are certain players who, Asamojan is kind of a striker who will score. But there are certain players who have to run to make defenders tired to create those chances for Asamojan. So if we don't have Asamojan, then we need to have, some, we need to have someone either who is, who have got the eye to score or who have got the eye to run defenders down so that other players can take the opportunity to score. So I'm not saying I'm the right person to, but we will need someone to do this kind of job. We've got a lot of good, um, good players, we've got a lot of good strikers, but I think um, they need to understand their job around the young ones, they need to understand their job around the other players and then um, I think the, go the goals will come. It's just a matter of time, the coach is new, there are a lot of new faces and then the, the players who, I can see there are a lot of young boys, I think um, the players who need to understand the style of their coach because this is a new coach, people are coming from like a different club, they've got like a different playing style, you can see the coach is rotating a lot of players around, so I think um, if he's able to get everything fixed, I think um, we've got, we've got the, we have the quality already and then we can use that. This is what this is what we call this is the professionalism. This is the professionalism. Um, you have to learn how to adapt. You have to learn how to adapt to every coach that you've met, like like you meet in your career. And then I've been to almost most of the players. I've been to a lot of different different clubs. They've got um, a lot of different coaches, and then every coach have his style of play. For example, um, when I was in Lorient, I was playing number nine, and then the coach sometimes the coach would tell me to not descend too much, stay in line with the center defenders and then make your runs behind. Don't even drop for the ball. So when I switch a club, for example, when I went to Nantes, the coach was telling me, when we don't have the ball, stay wide to, I was playing more on the wings. So the coach will tell me, stay more on the wings for the defense, that when we have the ball, come inside and stay next to the striker. So you can see this are, every coach have got his style of play. And then it's, it's up to the player to learn how to adapt quickly to every coach style and then uh, I think that will benefit the team, that will benefit you as well. So I think this is very important that the players that are coming from anywhere, it doesn't matter if you are, play, if you are playing in a local league, if you are playing in a top league, you should have the ability to adapt quickly because um, our career is, I would say, it's long because 15 years and then 15 years if you are playing professional level because, um, for example, if you are signing 20, and then um, if you are signing your first professional contract at 20 years, you've only got to 35, which is 15 years interval. So if you, are not, if you don't learn how to adapt into different 
coaches, then I think you will have a problem as a player because you cannot stay in one club for 15 years. So you need to learn how to adapt. So if you are playing anywhere and then you are coming back home, I think you just need to learn how to adapt into the new coach style, the system, how he wants you to play, and then how you can also contribute to help the team to achieve something good for the country. There are certain players in the team that I feel like, um, like they are like the power horse of the team. And then it's normal because every club or every country have got this kind of players. I can see a kind of similarity to Pate. I can see a kind of a big credit for that. I think every player who took part in the game will feel very proud of himself. Um, with this, I've got quite um, a lot of few, and then I've even got more, but this, I'm still trying to arrange very well with the decoration and then everything. Um, even though I'm not too good with the decoration, I think this was a gift after um, having a very good gift with the Black Star. Someone liked me and then he gave me a gift, and then this was um, one of the very good games, you can see it's cracked. As I say, I'm still doing a lot of um, I'm still doing a lot of fixing around my house as well. And then this was Porto when we won the league. And then this was um, another great achievement for having 100 start in the French league. And then um, as you say, this one is cracked as well. And then this was, was a gift. And then I think this one was um, probably I can't remember the game, but maybe um, I can't remember the game. But it was also a gift. And then this as well, this is um, one of the pictures I keep for a very long time. And then um, this picture actually represents when me and David Ackham, when we went to Hadbury, we were selected to play for the England colleges. And then this was, um, this was our team, this was, we were part of the team, so this was, um, we were from the same college, so we had this picture. And then it's like one of the um, good memories, as you can see, it's 2009 as well. So, and then this is the World Cup one, so you can see there are a lot of cracks on this because when I move to these new places, I still have to fix uh, a lot of things. So. And then uh, with this as well, I can, let me see which one is this. Yes, I think um, I won the best player in, in BK Hakeen. And then this was World Cup. And then as I was saying, this was um, the Gold King Award in Sweden. That was 2012. Um, it used to be like a big crystal ball on top of this. And then one of my friends just break it. And then um, till date, I still haven't found the complete crystal ball, how the, how it used to look like, so I'm still searching for it. And then hopefully if I get the chance to get it, then um, it will be good. And then I had this ball as well. This was my first Champions League I played. We, um, that was the game we played against um, Liverpool. And then you can see Casillas here, you can see Hernandez, you can see a lot of um, Otavio Pereira. So, I've got some quite good um, good memories with this ball. That's why I'm keeping it. And then this, I think, is the winning the championship in Portugal with 
with FC Porto and then this winner of Swedish Golden Boot Award, winning the top scorer in the Swedish league. My family, I, I try to keep them um, a little bit away from football because um, there's so much emotional effect on it. And then um, they watch sometimes, but I think um, I try to, sometimes they try to watch. Of course, my family will be excited.